so have a nice day my dear student today we will discuss about motor power rating thermal model motor duty class and its classification <coughs> so this is lecture 3 of electric drive and myself mr santanu noskar assistant professor of electrical department gkcm jis group and my mail id are santanu.uit@gmail.com and santanu.noskar underscore gkcm at the rate of jisgroup.org and this is my facebook page being electrify with santanu you can get all the lecture here and as well as in my youtube channel so let's start first of all we will discuss about our syllabus so this is your syllabus electric drive which is based on old syllabus of Macout. Your course code is WE701 and per week there are 3 hour lecture and 1 hour tutorial and this is your credit point which is 4. Already I have covered the electric drive concept classification parts advantage types of load components of load torque fundamental torque equation equivalent values of type parameter for loads with rotational and translational motion determination of motion moment of inertia steady state stability transient stability and multi quadrant operation of tries and also load equalizers so today we will discuss about the thermal model which is based on motor power rating so we will discuss about thermal model of motor for heating and cooling, classes of motor duty, determination of motor rating for continuous short time and intermittent duty, equivalent current torque and power method of determination of rating for fluctuating and intermittent load etc. So if you want to learn about motor power rating so follow my video and you have to also go through my previous lecture about the basic of electrical drives multi quadrant operation which uh, you will get in my youtube channel so today i have started about motor power rating so let's start so first of all what is motor power rating are okay so power rating for electrical machine indicates the required supply voltage for smooth running of that machine it is also shows the permissible maximum amount of current which can easily flow through the machine and there will be a chance of breakdown in the machine if those parameter goes beyond the limit okay similarly we can say when we discuss about motor power rating we are looking for the suitable condition where maximum efficiency is obtained from the electric motor when the motor have insufficient rating there will be frequent damage and shutdown due to overloading and this is not intended on the other hand if the power rating of motor is decided liberally the extra initial cost and then loss of energy due to operation below rated power makes this choice totally uneconomical <coughs> Another essential criteria of electrical motor power rating is that during operation of motor, heat is produced and it is inviolable due to I square R which is called ohmic loss in the circuit and friction within the motor. So the ventilation system of the motor should be designed very carefully to dissipate the generated heat as quickly as possible. The output power of the motor is directly related with the temperature rise. That's why 
it is called thermal loading the thermal dissipation will be ideal when the ventilation system is designed in such a way that the heat generated during the operation is equal to or less than heat dissipated by the motor to the surrounding now due to the design of motor temperature is not same everywhere inside the motor there is a high amount of heat produced in the winding because winding cause higher heat generation the insulating material used in the winding are also chosen depending on the heat generated inside the motor during operation so in the end it can be said that the main objective of selecting and finding the motor power rating r to obtain the suitable thermal model of motor and design the machine properly number 1 and number 2 finding out motor duty class and number 3 calculating motor rating for various classes of duty and this is the chart of insulation class of maximum permissible temperature there are several class y class 90 degree a 105 degree E about 120 degree, B 130, F 155, H 180, and C greater than 180 degree. So this is the insulation classes. Now we will discuss about thermal model of motor heating and cooling and why it necessary. We know that. when an electrical motor and drive operates there is a generation of heat inside the motor the amount of heat generated inside the motor should be known as accurately as possible that's why thermal modeling of motor is necessary the material of the motor and the shapes and size of the motor are not unique but the generation of heat does not alter very much depending on these characteristics so a simple thermal model of any motor can be obtained assuming it to be a homogeneous body the main aim of this modeling is to choose the appropriate rating of a motor so that the electric motor does not exist its shape limit during operation now at time t let the motor has following parameter p1 is heat developed joule per second or watts p2 heat dissipated to the cooling medium in watts W is the weight of the active part of the machine. H is the specific heat joule per kg per degree Celsius. A is the cooling surface meter square. D is the coefficient of heat transfer joule per second per meter square per degree Celsius. Theta is mean temperature rise in degree Celsius. now if time dt let the temperature rise of the machine let the temperature rise of the machine be d theta let that okay therefore heat absorb in the machine each heat generated inside the machine minus heat dissipated to the surrounding cooling medicine okay where d theta equals to p1 dt minus p2 dt and where p2 equals to theta da 1 and 2 equation substituting 2 and 1 we get C D theta equals to P one minus D theta, where C equals to W H and D equals to D A. 
Here C is called the thermal capacity of the machine in watts per degree Celsius and D is the heat dissipation constant in watt per degree Celsius. Okay. Now wh when we acquire the first order differential equation of the equation we get C d theta by dt equals to P1 minus d theta. From here we get theta equals to theta double s plus k e to the power minus t by tau number 3 where theta double s equals to p1 by d and t equals to c by d. So finally theta equals to theta double s 1 minus k e to the power minus t by tau. How we get this? We obtain the value of k by putting t equals to 0 in equation 3 and we get the solution. This solution we get by putting t equals to 0 in equation 3. <coughs> okay. So from the above equation we find out the rise in temperature inside a working machine which is very near to being accurate and if we plot a graph for the variation of temperature risk with time during heating and cooling and thus the thermal modeling of a motor gets completed. So this is the graph, heating and cooling graph. Okay. Now we go for a, an example of this formula mathematical example of this formula now the example math a motor operates on a periodic duty cycle in which it is clutched to its load for 10 minutes and declutched to run on load for 20 minutes Minimum temperature rise is 40 degree Celsius. Heating and cooling time constants are equal and have a value of 60 minutes. When load is declutched, continuously the temperature rise is 50 degree Celsius. Now determine the one maximum temperature during the duty cycle and temperature when the load is clutched continuously. Now here are the solution. Since the motor is subjected to a periodic intermittent load, temperature at the end of cycle will be same at the beginning cycle. From previous equation we get theta 2 equals to theta s s 1 minus 10 by 60 plus 40 e to the power minus 10 by 60 and from here we can get this now from equation 1 that means this equation we get 40 equals to 15 1 minus t to the minus 20 by 60 plus theta 2 theta minus 20 by 60 which gives theta 2 equals to 49.9 degree celsius this all coming from this total equation okay so if you go through this previous slide and understand this you will surely solve those problem now so, number 2 substituting value of theta 2 in equation 1 equation a gives theta double s equals to 104.5 degree celsius ok so go through my next slide now we will discuss about motor duty class and its application nowadays in almost every application electrical motor are used and to control them electrical drives are employed but the operation time for all motors are not same some of the motors run all the time and some of the motors run time is shorter than the rest period depending on this concept of motor duty class is introduced and on the basis of this duty cycle of the motor can be divided in eight categories number one continuous duty number two short time duty number three intermittent periodic duty number four intermittent periodic duty with starting 
Number five, intermittent periodic duty with starting and breaking. Number six, continuous duty with intermittent periodic lock loading. Number seven, continuous duty with starting and breaking. Number eight, continuous duty with periodic speed change. Now, one by one, I will describe all those duty. So, first, <coughs> continuous duty. So, this duty denotes the motor is running long enough and the electric motor temperature reach the steady state value. This motor are used in paper mill drive and compressor and conveyors. This is a conveyor. Now, short time duty. In this motor, the time of operation is very low and the heating time is much lower than the cooling time. So that motor, <coughs> so that motor cooks up to ambient temperature before operating again. This motor are used in crane drives drives for household application and valve strike and this is a valve and this is the graph of heating cooling next intermittent periodic duty here the motor operates for some time and then there is rest period in both case the time is insufficient to raise the temperature to steady state value or cool it off to ambient temperature this is seen at press and drilling drive. So this is a drilling machine. Now intermittent period duty with starting. In this type of duty there is a period of starting which cannot be ignored and there is a heat loss at that time. After that there is running period and rest period which are not adequate to attain the steady state temperatures. This motor duty class is widely used in metal cutting and drilling tool drives mine host. So this is an example of metal cutting. Now intermittent periodic duty with starting and breaking. In this type of drives heat loss during starting and breaking cannot be ignored. So the corresponding periods are starting period, operating period and breaking period and resting period. But all the periods are too short to attain the respective steady state temperature. This technique are used in fillet mill drive and manipulator drive mine host. So this is called intermittent periodic duty. With. <laughs> so this is an example of intermittent periodic duty. This is an mine host. In mine, people are work like this. Now, continuous duty with intermittent periodic loading. In this type of motor duty, everything is same as the periodic duty, but there are no load running period occur instead of the rest period. Pressing, cutting are the example of this system. Okay. Now, continuous duty with starting and breaking. It is also a period of starting, running and breaking and there is no resting period. The main drives of the blooming mill is an example. Well, this is a blooming mill. Now continuous duty with periodic speed change. In this type of motor duty there are different running period at different loads and speed. But there is no rest period and all the period are too short to act in the steady state temperature. So, now go through my next slide. So now we will discuss about determination of motor power rating. From the point of view of calculation of motor rating, various motor rating, various duty cycle can be broadly classified as continuous duty, fluctuating load and short time intermediate duty. Okay, first of all go through the continuous duty 
So maximum continuous power demand of the load is ascertained. Motor with next higher power rating from commercially available rating is selected. Obviously, motor speed should also match load speed requirements. It is also necessary to check whether the motor can fulfill starting torque requirement and can continue to drive load in the phase of normal disturbance in power system supply. The latter is generally assured by transient and steady state reserve torque capacity of the motor. Now go through the equivalent current torque and power methods for fluctuating and intermittent loads. This method can be employed for duties from 3 to 8. In our previous slide, we described uh, different types of duty cycle. So this method can be employed for duties 3 to 8. It is based on the approximation that the actual variable motor current can be replaced by an equivalent current which produce some losses in the motor as actual current. This equivalent current is determined as follows. So please go through this uh, picture and equation. So motor loss P1 consists of two component constant loss PC which is independent of load and consists of core loss and friction loss and load dependent copper loss thus for fluctuating load. In this figure consisting of n values of motor current uh, from i1 to in and duration t1 to tn the equivalent current is given by this equation from pc plus i equal minus square r equals to this from here we can get the i equivalent which is root over uh, 1 by t 0 to t uh, integration i square dt where if the uh, current uh, varies uh, smoothly over a period t can be written as i equivalent uh, root over 1 by t 0 to t i square dt and integral of 0 to t and i square dt represent the area between i square versus t curve and the axis or duration 0 to t. Implicit in above analysis in the assumption that heating and cooling condition remain same if motor runs at constant speed throughout this operation heating and cooling condition will in fact remain same if speed varies constant losses will marginally changed however if force ventilation is used heating and cooling condition can still be assumed to remain same without much loss of accuracy in self ventilation machine cooling condition at low speed will be poorer than at normal speed consequently from this equation should be used with caution after i equal determined a motor with next higher current rating from commercially available rating is selected next this rating is checked for its practical flexibility now for our dc motor this motor can be allowed to carry large than B the rated current for a short duration. This is known as short time overload capacity of the motor. A normally designed DC machine is allowed to carry up to two times the rated current and three to three point five times the rated current in specially designed DC machine. Because for higher current sparking between the brasses and commutator reaches an unacceptable level, let the ratio of maximum allowable current of short time overload current capacity to rated current be denoted by lambda then lambda greater than equals to i max by i rated where i max is the maximum value of current and i rated is the rated current of the motor so if the condition is not satisfied then motor current rating is calculated from i rated greater than equals to i max by lambda Okay, now go through an example of induction motor and synchronous motor. So this is an induction motor and it is a synchronous motor and this is the equation of synchronous speed n s equals to 120m by p where f is the frequency and p is the number of pole. So in case of induction and synchronous motor for stable operation maximum load torque should be well within the breakdown torque of motor if motor current rating selected based on equations violates the constraint 
the motor rating various duty cycle is selected to satisfy breakdown torque constant in case of induction motor with normal design the ratio of breakdown to rated torque varies from 1.6 to 3 and for synchronous motor 2 to 2.5 for special type it is 3.5 here i have mentioned this if the ratio breakdown to rated torque is denoted by lambda then motor torque rating choose t rated greater than equals to t max by lambda dash this is lambda dash previous we mentioned lambda when the load is uh, load as high torque pulse selection of motor rating various duty cycle based on this will be too large now load equalization by mounting a flywheel on the motor shaft must then be considered now equivalent current method assume constant loss to remain a constant for all operation points therefore this method should be carefully employed when these losses vary it is also not applicable to motors with frequency or speed dependent parameters of the equivalent circuit example in deep bar and double squirrel cage rotor motor the rotor winding resistance and reactance vary widely during starting and breaking making this method inapplicable when torque is directly proportional to current for an example the, the separately excited motor so the torque equation is root over t1 cast t1 square into t1 plus t2 square like tn square t1 by t1 plus t2 plus tn now from this equation can be employed to directly assert in the motor torque rating when the motor operates at nearly fixed speed its power will be directly proportional to torque hence for nearly constant speed rotation however power rating of the motor can be obtained directly from p equivalent root over p1 square t1 p2 square t2 plus vn square tn by t1 t2 like this t1 okay now we will go through an example of those equation we have previously discussed an example math a constant speed drive has the following duty cycle number one load rising from 0 to 400 kilowatt 5 minute number two uniform load of 500 kilo in 5 minute and regenerative power of 400 kilo return to the supply 4 minute and remain idle for 2 minute so estimate power rating of the motor assume low losses to be proportional to the power so this is the solution rated power equals to r rms value of the power rms now the rms value of the power interval is we can get from this equation now we can get the power rm p rms from equals to 367 kilowatt so this is just an example that we have uh, covered those equation uh, formula uh, this example will help you very much now go through uh, short time duty in short time duty the time of motor operation is considerably less than the heating time constant and motor is allowed to cool down the ambient temperature before it required to operate again if a motor with continuous duty power rating of pr is subject to a short time duty load of magnitude pr then the motor temperature rise will be far below the maximum permissible value theta per and the motor will be highly under utilized utilize figure go through this figure now therefore motor can be overloaded by a factor k k greater than equals to 1 such that the maximum temperature rise just reach the permissible value theta per as shown in this figure here yeah, theta versus t curve for short time duty loads uh, shown here a is the uh, with a power with kp kpr and b power with pr so when motor uh, duration of running period in a motor rating various duty cycle with power kpr is tr then theta pr equals to theta s is 1 minus e to the power minus tr by tau from this we can get theta double s by theta par note that theta double s is already steady state temperature rise which will be attained if motor delivers a motor kpr on continuous basis whereas the permissible temperature rise theta per is also the steady state temperature rise at n when motor operates with power pr on continuous basis so if the motor losses for power pr and kpr be p1r and p1s 
respectively then from here we can calculate the theta double s by theta part equals to p1 s by p1 r which is 1 minus 1 minus it will be t r by tau so where pc is a load independent constant loss and pc is a load dependent loss okay and alpha equals pc by pc so from here we can calculate p1 s and substituting those equation we can calculate p1 s by this and substituting all equation we can calculate alpha plus k square by alpha plus 1 equals to this and from here we can calculate k so equation those equation allow the calculation of overloading factor k which can be calculated when constant and proper losses are known separately when separately known not known total loss is assumed to be only proportional power square and this assume alpha assumed to be zero as already mentioned k is subjected to the constant imposed by maximum allowable current in case of induction and synchronous motor okay now go through the intermediate periodic duty this is nothing but uh, during a period of operation if the speed change it in wide limit the leading to change in heating and cooling condition methods of equivalent current torque or power described in the previous section cannot be employed this section describe method useful for such cases so this is a intermediate periodic load let us consider a simple intermediate periodic load when the motor is alternately subjected to a fixed magnitude load p dash r to of duration tr and standstill condition ts as motor subjected to a periodic load after the thermal steady state is reached the temperature rise will fluctuated between a maximum value of theta max and a minimum value of theta min for this load the motor rating various duty cycle should be selected such theta max less than equal to theta part where theta part is the maximum permissible temperature rise of the motor so from those equation we can get this equation theta max equals to this and fall in the temperature rise at the end of the standstill interval ts will be theta mean which is equal to this where tower and tau is at the thermal time constant of motor of working and standstill interval now we can right theta double s by theta max equals to this from here for full utilization of motor theta max equals theta per further theta per will be the motor temperature rise when it is subjected to is continuous rated power pr so from those equation theta ratio of theta double s and theta max will be proportional to losses that would take place for two values of load so if losses for load values pr and p dash are be denoted by p1r and p1s then we can write theta ss by theta power equals to p1s by p. now from this we can calculate the k okay so k can be determined from equation subject to maximum current limitation of dc motor and breakdown torque constant of induction and synchronous motor as explained earlier when constant and copper loss are not available separately and alpha is replaced by zero so this all my lecture this is little bit large okay but we have to complete those we have to know those things because we are electrical engineer so now i am going through some reference book which is textbook is fundamental of electrical drives by gk duge new age international publication and electric drives by vedam subramanyam tata magrohi publication and first course of electrical drives by sk pillai new age international publication and some reference book is electric motor drives by r krishnan and modern power electronics and ac drives by bk bose and electric motor and drives by austin hughes so this is the reference now 
आई विल एंड माय लेक्चर बाय अ स्पेशल कोट बाय अ स्पेशल मैन निकोल टेस्ला सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल थैंक्स फॉर टॉलरेटिंग मी प्लीज लाइक कमेंट शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब माय चैनल नाउ Mr Tesla said that if you want to find the secret of the universe think in terms of energy frequency and vibration so please you all think in terms of energy frequency and vibration so hope you all enjoyed my lecture thank you